Welcome to Kitty Talks. We share inspirational life stories that inspire you to create yours. And today I have with me Dean Griffiths. Hi, Dean. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Dean is a gifted intuitive called the Soul Whisperer. He's also the founder of Energy Fusion, a health and well-being platform for corporates. So, Dean, thank you so much for joining us today. A gifted intuitive. Tell me more. Yeah. So. I mean, we're all intuitive. So let me just kind of say that we are all intuitive. Is that any skill that you have, whatever you nurture, you can, it can become something you can use. So I've learned to nurture my intuitive gifts to use them as, as within my coaching. So I do a lot of intuitive readings. Um, and actually how I started doing my readings were through the chakras. So I, I know very little about the chakras, but I was interested in the, in the seven chakras. And I, I understood exactly what each one did. But I use them as an access point to understand what each person or where each person was struggling or where there was imbalances within that person. But for me, it actually started physically. And, you know, I, this experience of being intuitive, I can go back to my whole life and now I can see where the different points were. But when I trained in Reiki about 12, 13 years ago, I started picking up, I, almost get, I was getting images of people. So as I was scanning people's bodies, I was almost getting like an X-ray vision of their body. And I remember I was working with this one woman and I said, do you have a problem with your left knee? She goes, yeah, how do you know? So well, it came up when I was scanning you, I got this vision. And actually, some of which we, did, we spoke about just before coming on camera is talking about the chills down my back. Yeah. I'm just as I'm sharing this story. And we're talking about this, what it means for me. So... When I, as I scanned this woman's body and I got her knee and I started thinking about these other things about and I realized that actually, wow, I'm picking up a lot of stuff about someone. So, you know, I'm literally only an hour into studying Reiki and I'm already picking up a lot of information about people. So the intuitive part was there beforehand, but the Reiki for me opened up the channels even further. So now I was more, I mean, I, in one of my bios, I talk about it as being my um, kind of emotional um, teenage years. I was, I was picking up all the stuff. It's like, whoa, okay, what, what is my stuff? What's the person that I'm here with? What's their stuff? So a lot of my stuff was learning how to, to kind of interpret what was coming through me that I had to share, mm -hmm. what information was just, just general information that has come through my mind. So just so, so people understand, so you use your gift within coaching. So you use your intuition to coach predominantly women, is that right? Yeah, so my main focus is women. Yeah. And that, that I mean, I, I work with men, but it's more that I, I found that I'm more effective with women. So basically what happens is someone will come to me and they're normally at a point, and I always say they're normally like a crossroads in life. And one of the key areas with my work is relationships. They often find that the relationships even just broken down. Well, actually, one of the most common things is actually their relationship breaks down while they're coaching with me which I take full responsibility for. That's fine. <laughs> well, they can you want to be careful with that one. Uh, Again, it always either yeah. way because it was heading that way anyway, but now they can actually see the reasons why the relationship happened and then why they had to come out of that relationship. So it always works out the best way. But so normally they come to be at that kind of point where they're in that kind of crossroads in life. They're looking and it's not just relationship, relationships are always a key area, but work, their life purpose, they're, they're questioning a lot of things. And I think what I'm finding is is where most people used to do that when they were in their 30s and 40s, I'm now working with women in their 20s who are really now questioning, going, okay, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And not just following that normal pattern anymore. What do you put that down to? You think people are becoming conscious at a younger age? I think there's a huge shift in the vibration of the planet. Um, and if you tune into something which is called the um, Schumann Resonance, which originally was, there, I think, a about 7.8 hertz. So this is, this is the natural vibration of Earth. And actually within the last month, it's gone up to over 30, it's between 30 and 35. So there's been a huge shift in vibration in human beings and in, in the universe. And part of it, something I agree really was quite interesting was saying that we were kept at a low vibration to stop us from tapping into our past lives and other memories from other experiences that we've had as a soul. 
Now, as we as we vibrate at a higher resonance, what happens is we can have to have more information. So this whole intuitive thing is you want to find people who can be like ultra intuitive and not just intuitive, but psychic everything. These skills, these gifts, which only you kind of see a few people have, you want to see so many more people. You're going to see some younger generations more and more as we now go through the next kind of century or two. Because as the vibration of Earth changes and goes higher, so does the human beings, mm. which means souls get to express themselves even better. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a huge change in intuitive psychic abilities. It's going to go way beyond that in terms of healing as well. Yeah. Well, we, um, we were saying before, weren't we, that uh, everybody basically has the capacity to be intuitive. It's uh, more that you've practiced your gift uh, and talents to enable you to be more tuned into it effectively. But everybody on the planet has the capability to do it. Yeah, it's, it's something we're all born with. And a lot of people can always kind of, you know, for, you know, for example, um, they're thinking of a friend, all of a sudden their friend will call them. Yeah. Everyone can think of instances where they've actually had that intuitive happen to them, but they haven't related to it to being intuitive. So once you recognize, you go, ah, okay, now, can I do that again? And the idea is, and basically what I did is, when, okay, so I've done that once, can I try it again? And I, and I did it again, and again, all of a sudden, there's more information coming in because now I'm open to it. So you have to be receptive. So people who go, Look, I don't believe that stuff, means that they're close to it, which is, that's fine. If you're open to it, now anything can happen. So some people are a lot more naturally gifted towards that mm-hmm. because it's they are and for the purpose of their soul. And for others, it's not as important. But we all have that ability to tap into it. And we're all doing it to a certain degree. We're just not calling it intuitive. We're calling it gut feeling, women's intuition, whatever you want to call it. We all have that ability. Mm. Fantastic. So what we love to do at Kitty Talks is inspire people with your life story. So what I'd love for you to do is share with us, you know, obviously now you're, you've been doing this for years, you know, you've developed your gift, you've coached thousands of people. Um, but take us back to the beginning of your journey. Because um, now for hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. You can probably see the synchronicities that led you to do what you're doing. So I'd love to understand a bit, bit more about your childhood or, or how this whole thing came about, really. So and this is funny because I actually have very few memories of my childhood. This is, this is always an interesting thing that I had um, psychic readings. I was going, we don't have many memories of your childhood. I go, yeah. And the things I remember is always interesting. So this is why the things that I'm going to share with you now are things, are really only the few things I remember from my childhood. So my parents were divorced when I was about at age of nine. So I never had really had a relationship with my father. So I think that helped me kind of go internally more. I was very much, a, and I am an introvert anyway, but it allowed it, it, in a sense, it forced me to go inside more. I, and I created my own world. I was, and, and I still am. I'm very much happy on my own. But when I was a child, I spent a lot of time on my own. And even in the house I lived at, we had no heating upstairs. So it would be very cold. I would spend hours up there on my own. Because there was something about me being in my own world. This, I think this links back into the intuitive. It's allowed me to really connect with myself and who I am. Mm, which is yeah. Yeah, you know, like a kid. Yeah. yeah, so I was always aware, but that, you know, I was always aware that there was something spirit. You know, when you're a child, you don't really understand um, psychic abilities and that kind of thing. So I was aware that there was something there. I could feel something, but I didn't know what it was. So I remember one night, now in my bedroom, I didn't have curtains. So I remember one night I woke up and there was a reflection on the cupboard opposite the window. And it looked like three figures, and the three figures, and it always sticks in my mind, it was like the three Scrooges. The, the, the three, uh, I can't remember, the, 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 the comedians, there was the three Scrooges, uh, Scrooges. So they were standing by the window, and I, I remember kind of just turning my head slightly, just having to quickly look out my eye to see if I could see anything, there was nothing there. But every time I looked at the reflection, there was these three figures standing there. Wow. It's like, oh, wow, okay, really cool. Again, I'm getting my chills down the back, so it's really cool. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of, again, it's kind of like, that was my first known connection with spirit of some kind so you could see the reflection of spirit in the window but you couldn't see them in real life i couldn't see the fit with my physical eye no so every time i looked at the mirror in, in out the window i couldn't see anything physically but in reflection i could see it i got chills then too yeah so for me it was like wow okay that was really interesting that was probably my my guys i'm guessing was the first, on their first connections with me so the same way how old were you at this point 
it would have been, I'm guessing, probably around about 14, 15. Okay. So then what was interesting, okay, so at that kind of age, you don't really think about it too much, but I was obviously conscious of it. And, I, and obviously, as I was getting older, I was kind of aware that there was an energy, something around it. And my mum had been told, so one key thing is my mum was told when she was pregnant with me is that she may have lost another baby. There may have been twins. And she was told in a reading that there was a, possibly I had a twin and he would have died very early. And there, and there was always this little boy that would move things around our house for fun to get my mum up. My mum was very serious. She had a lot of anger and frustration. She was a single mum. You know, she worked hard and then she had to do everything at the weekend around the house, cooking and everything, cleaning. So she had a lot of anger and frustration. So this little spirit would move things to fun to make her laugh. But obviously it aggravated more. So it's quite fun. And this spirit has come back into her life again now because she's had the same thing come up more recently. So there's been this whole thing that I've had this twin. Now, what, if you look into the deeper, what you find is, is that sometimes when a one embryo absorbs another embryo within the womb, they take on a lot of their abilities as well. Mm. So part of my thing was maybe that I was meant to take on my twin's energy as well. As part of this. Mm. So you've got like a double intuition because you're, you've got your twin's energy maybe. Yeah, whatever it is. So but I've always had that connection. Actually, one of my girlfriends um, a few years ago, I remember us walking down and she, and she was very intuitive as well. And we were walking down by the river and she goes, I, I see a figure over there. And, and I hadn't really mentioned this twin. And she said, I think that's your twin brother. So there's always that connection about this. So these little things were happening as I was growing up. Obviously, I wasn't linking them into intuition and what I'd be doing with my life and stuff. And then I had a, a point where I'd done some ironing. So I had a big pack of ironing. I was taking it up to my bedroom. I put it down. And I, and I went, okay, if there's really spirits here, one thing I hate is spiders. I put a spider under my clothes. I thought, okay, let's test it. So I left the room, I came back, and I lift up my clothing to put it into the, into the drawers, and this big spider jumped out. Huh? I went, okay, great. So there's a part of me questioning, even though I didn't understand the age, I was questioning, and now I'm getting confirmation that the spirit's there. There's something that I'm connecting with spirit, even if I don't know what it means and how it's going to work for me. So is that, you know, if someone's curious out there, you know, they're starting to get signs, they're starting to get signals, is, is that something they can do to encourage the connection? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about spirit. If you ask them to give you a particular sign, especially I, I don't, I, the one with the spiders, I don't know why I did it, because I hate spiders. But it was something that would make me trigger my mind with, okay, that's the one thing I hate. So, but with spirit, you can ask them and say, can you give me a sign? Something which, I, and I actually asked for a particular sign, and they gave me exactly the sign I was looking for. So, for some people, you can actually ask for something in particular, and you will yeah. get it. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, so I, I said, look, do you really want to know? You know, when we talk about synchronicities and things, if you really want to tap into it, yeah, you can get signs very quickly. And once you start seeing those signs, you'll see them more and more. I think that's basically what happened for me at a younger age is I connected with that. And subconsciously, I was starting to link in with it. But even though consciously, I didn't know how I was doing it and why. So, um, so this is like 14, 15. Did you, because I think it sounds like you were pretty conscious at quite a young age. Did you remain on that path or what happened next? No, you know, here, and then here's the other thing. This is when I next, so when I get into my early 20s, this is when we, a teenager, you go out drinking a lot on Saturday, Friday or Saturday night. So one of the things I always remember is, and anyone who knows me, Whenever I do, I've, I've done drugs in my life. Whenever I, I get drunk, I do drugs. I'm no different. I'm the same person. But the thing that happened with me was that I started giving people information and giving them advice. So I remember talking to someone at a bar, and, and she was struggling with her relationship. And I, all of a sudden, I found myself giving her all this information. I said, but you know this pattern you've got here and this kind of information? And she was looking at me going, how do you know this about me? I went, yeah, I was picking up this kind of information. So it was only happening when I was drunk. So the other thing is, which I would say that the reason why people will go for alcohol or drugs is that they're searching to tap into their real selves. It's a way of accessing who you really are. So for me, through drinking, I actually found that I was actually tapping into my intuitive ability. But again, I wasn't aware of it. So all these little things were happening. I can now look back and go, okay, I can see how it worked. But at the time, I was just, in me so I thought that's what it was so in one sense I, I didn't 
I wouldn't say I was conscious, but I was aware of something happening. I was aware, you know, I remember having family, I think they were uncles and aunties, they're taking a group of children out. To, uh, it was a hot summer's day. We'd gone out and they took us to uh, buy ice creams and we went to a shop. And I remember them asking, Do you want an ice cream? And everyone was going for the most expensive, the biggest ice cream. I went for the smallest ice cream. There was a, there was a feeling inside me that they can't afford this. So I, I felt guilty. So I only asked for the cheapest ice cream that they had. So I was aware of those things that I was picking up on when yeah. I was younger. Like I said, now I can look back and see why, but at the time I didn't know why. And I was how, really how are you? So again, people out there listening um, who want to who, who want to develop their psychic gifts, their intuition. How is the information given to you? How would you recognise uh, the difference between thinking and your gift, intuition? So th- this is something that took me years to really learn because to me it comes through my thoughts so I get random thoughts in my mind and I now what is I trust my thoughts so no and I and I can filter what are my thoughts and what are my thoughts I need to share with someone I'm talking to. So when I first started I would over exaggerate I'll give so much information I'll say this and this and you've got this problem this problem and actually it would put people off. So I had to learn to overgive. And because I wasn't really understanding the information that was coming through to me. The other thing which was really important as in tune and the same for psychics is being able to interpret the information because spirit are not just giving you the information in a very simple way. They're feeding the energy through you. And then your mind is then converting that into messages that you understand that you can then convey to the person that you're sharing that with. Well, they give it to you in a way that you understand, don't they? The same yeah. way you share it. Yeah. So they're not, they're not going to go, hey, kitty. Tell Kitty that she's got this problem going on. They're going to go, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to go, okay, so here's what it feels like to me. And then I'll share that information. Yeah. Obviously, as, as, as I progress over years, I can be more spot on with my information because now I'm not, you know, the other thing which is about any good intuitive or psychic is, is they will detach themselves from the person they're working with, which means I'm not trying to give you information that's going to help you. And anyone who's worked with me, I give you the information that you need to know right now that's going to have the biggest impact on you and what you're trying to achieve. Mm. And I think one of the things I've learned is I find that when I get information, it drops in for me rather than it, a thought kind of drifts and goes through. Whereas if I'm given something from the universe, I get it as a boom, like almost like a, they use the expression download. Exactly. That's how I. The other, way, the, other, the other way I also get information is, is that someone is speaking, and certain words or phrases will jump out at me. So also I'm listening to the person going, why are they using that language? Why those words? So for me, there's certain words, language that they're using also that I'm tapping into, going, okay, there's a there's a reason. So my guides also show me what they're showing me back, so I can understand why they're talking in a certain way about certain things. Why are they mentioning that? that particular point in that particular way. So I do it two ways. I've got information coming from my guys through me, but I'm also observing that person and how they're speaking and what they're speaking about, and especially the words that they're using and in, in what context. Because to me, it always comes back to context. What context are you are you talking about? What's going on in life? Mm. So, you know, I always use the example of two people. You know, I've worked with a few women who've been abused in relationships. So what you find is the context and how they speak. So I have had one client who would be, they, they, they did this to me, they did this to me, but that woman, this is what I experienced in each relationship. So you, you can see that each one had a different perspective and the context of what happened to them is very, very different. So the person who had blamed other people, for her, it took longer to get through it because she didn't realise that she had created that situation. Whereas the person who realised there was an awareness that, she was attracting these people for, for some reason. Even if she didn't know why, there was an awareness. So the context and how she was sharing with me, I could tell where I can work with her. Where someone who is very blocked, you can't just be straight in the face sometimes because they're going to back off even more. So you've got to find an exit, uh, sorry, an entry point that allows you to go there. So sometimes you have to be softer. So really, it's, for me, it's a two. It's not just what I'm, I'm channeling through my guides. 
it's also what I'm, I'm getting back from the person I'm working with. And that to me is probably the more important part because I need to understand where they are and then where can I take them from where they are now. Mm, beautiful. Um, so when did you go, because obviously I know, I know you well, I know we were good friends, um, and I obviously know that you trained as a personal trainer, trainer and you trained in Paul Check's work. Um, when did you make the transition? And obviously you worked in the city quite a few years as well. But when did you make the transition from those aspects of yourself into full-time intuitive soul whisperer coach? So I worked in the city for about seven years. So when I was about 25, no, actually I trained as a personal trainer about three years beforehand, actually, before I left. Um, and actually it was then, so I worked on cruise ships. My first real experience in personal training and everything was working on the cruise ships. So I traveled around the world for three and a half years on cruise ships. But that got me into holistic uh, medicine, so aromatherapy and all those kind of things. So I did a lot of research. Then I was, one of the things that I, I'm, I love is information. So yeah. I spent most of my time researching, looking at information. I'm looking for things that people don't know or talk about. So I would do all the research and a lot of people would come to me because I would spend my free time looking for information. So... That started my kind of whole thought process on that more holistic approach. So when I came back from cruise ships, I was seeking something. And I met a, a friend of mine who was training with Paul Check. He said, well, I'm doing this kind of stuff. I'm thinking either to be an osteopath or carry on Paul Check's route. I went, osteopath, yeah, everyone's an osteopath. I don't, I don't want that. Paul Check, never heard of this guy. It sounds really cool. So I, I, I did the first part of that, which is the nutrition and lifestyle side. So he's training, got two sides. got the nutrition lifestyle, which I did. To, for two levels and then he's got the exercise side which I did for three levels so but it was actually the nutrition and lifestyle side which opened me up into Reiki I also trained in EFT so that was a part, part of it that actually took me down the, this route but actually one of the key things which is why I love now is that me going down the physical route really helped me integrate the two together because obviously we're physical beings so a lot of people are coming with physical pain so now with my work, I can link so much of people's physical stuff back to what's going on mentally, emotionally. So for a lot of my clients who are going for, through physical pain, like thyroid, one of my clients right now has got thyroid problems. So mm. we can work with that on a physical level, but on the mental, emotional level, we know that links back into communication, creativity, and expression. So now I work with her on both levels. So that's really helpful. So really it was about that time. But like I said it earlier, it was a Reiki that for me, I think, made that big shift into being aware, into being conscious that I had a gift I wanted to share. And it was something that I didn't even, I didn't plan. No. I didn't use it. I, my first memory of using it is I ran a, a, a workshop on posture. And during the, the break, during my lunch break, I, I started doing readings. I remember doing this reading for one woman and I was looking at her chakras and I looked at her, one of her, I think it was even her base note, it was her sacral chakra. And I went, hmm, it seems like someone's just left your life and a mum had died like two days ago. Wow. So I, that's when I started realising this, oh, I'm picking up on some really cool stuff here. And I just started, basically, which is what we're saying about how do you nurture this, I just started giving lots of reading. I, and I, like I said, I started off too egotistical. I would give everybody a reading. I'd tell everybody what I thought I, I was picking up about. And then I had to learn. But I've worked at a few different shows like Mind, Body, Spirit, and it's through continuously doing readings and sharing what, I'm, what I've, I'm picking up. That's how I've actually nurtured that skill. And obviously, I, I think I've still, I'm, I, the way I look at it right now is, I think I'm not even close to my, my best yet. Mm. I think I've got a lot of mobilities that I can tap into that I haven't even tapped into yet. Mm. Well, that makes total sense because the more we practice something, the better we get at it. You know, it's like anything in life, really. So uh, other than asking spirit for signs, uh, what advice would you have for someone who is trying to op open up their intuition and their psychic gift? What other things can they do? You know, the, the, the big thing is actually being able to be in contact with how you're thinking and your thoughts. Because that to me, that's how I learned to know what was my thoughts and what are things coming through me that I need to share. So one first thing, you know, and I've worked with a, one of our close friends, Penny, who when we first met, I used to spend time and teach her how I did it. And one of the things is actually was, was making her aware of what she's thinking about, her thoughts. That's what I do with anybody, all my coaching clients now. Okay? Be aware, because you have to remember, 
we have over 60,000 thoughts a day, and 95% of those are negative, and 90% of those are the ones that you had yesterday. So we're going through repetitive thoughts all the time, we're not even conscious of it. So if you can start becoming aware of what you're thinking about, now you understand your own voice. So when you get another voice, jump in and says, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to give you some information, you go, okay, who are you? Now you're starting to be aware that something else communicating here. So we also have our own voices. We have more than one voice for ourselves. Like our higher self has its own voice. If you can connect with your higher self, you can ask it to give you a different voice. So a lot of this is only it's only happening in your, in your head. So people always go, well, how do I know the difference? Go, it doesn't matter. You can ask them to, to communicate with you in any way you want. So my higher self, if it wants to communicate with me, will give me a very different voice to my voice that I hear in my own head. And that's how I know. It's the same for my guides. When I'm getting information that's relevant for the person I'm working with, the voice is different. So it has a different tone. It has something different that I go, ah, okay, I need to, I need to share this information. But I also now use a filter where I go, okay, do I need, because one of the things I, I found early on, I remember a friend of mine in Canada, I did a reading for him. And afterwards he went, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. None of it means anything to me. So, okay. Luckily, I did quite a few readings during that trip that actually was fine. A lot of people got it. But what I realized was, because about three years later, he sends me an email and he goes, okay, I think I've got it now. So it took him a while. So what I realized is, is that they were feeling information that wasn't relevant for that person right now. So one of the first things I realized is, so I go, look, great, I'm getting all the information, perfect. Can we just bring in the timeline? Because spirit doesn't think in time. It's just getting the information. And obviously, if he applied the information and gave it a time, it would have made his marriage break up and everything he went through a lot easier. So it was, in one sense, it was a bit of a moment. But he wasn't open to the information. He wasn't there at that point. We're not meeting the people where they're, they're, they're at at that point. So I'm giving information that's relevant, but it's not relevant to them. That was me being oh, trying to over give. So right. my, my guys were going, okay, if that's how you want it, that's how we give it to you. I went, okay, no, no, no. Give me what I need to share right now. So even now, I can pick up stuff about people going, but do I need to share it? And so, this is about thoughts. So asking spirit, empowering questions is basically what you're saying. So ask them. Yeah for what you want and how you want it. <coughs> but you're, by the sounds of things, you ask for whatever that can make the best impact, highest impact for that person in this moment. Exactly. So for me, it's, it's not about what my picking up is, what do I need to share with this person right now that's relevant? And sometimes, and I've been had it, I think, on two occasions in, in 12 years, but sometimes they would give me absolutely nothing. And I go, okay, I can't share anything with you. But, it's a, so it's allowing that community. Remember, it's, you're the one communicating with it physically, but you need the channel also communicated to you in the right way so that you understand it. So that's also a way of developing your intuitive skills. So you learn to communicate with your guys and say, look, do you understand what you're talking about? Can you start giving this information in a different way so that I get it? But obviously, they give it in a way that they think or they know that you can get it. And some people, it takes longer to nurture. And other people, I mean, I say I'm, I've been very lucky. It just happened for me very easy. Again, I'm, I'm a smooth, in, a, in, a, in a nice way, I'm a smooth channel for them to pass information through. And I think that also goes back to the whole physical stuff, is that I look after myself physically, because what people forget about is your thoughts and mind is also very linked to your body. That's why I study the body first. Because I realize if I'm looking after my body, exercise, what I eat, sleep, that's a really, really important part for being intuitive and psychic. Mm. That for me was the part I had to learn first because I think if I'd gone the other route, mm. probably wouldn't have been this good. Yes. Well, that's why people fast, isn't it? You know, and then they get a deeper connection to spirit because they are a purer channel. The body's got less work to do with food or whatever else, you know. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's learning to connect and communicate in a way that works with you and your guides. And obviously, it's different for each person. So obviously, how I do it is very different how other people may do it. There are similarities in that they learn to get that communication between the two happening because it's not until you can learn how to connect and communicate with your guide when you learn how to pass information over to other people. And what advice would you have? Because obviously, Kitty Talks is all about people following their passion and purpose and doing what it is that lights them up in any given moment. Um, say we've got people listening who they do feel actually their gift or their intuition is something that they potentially want to follow but they don't really know how to do that uh, have you got any advice for them about how they could speed up the process 
it's not a, I wouldn't say speeding up process because I said, I don't, I don't think I'm even running at full when I've been doing it for 12 years. I don't think I'm running at full kilter yet. So here's where, when I talk about purpose, I said, look, there's been a theme to your life. So for me, my theme has been information. Even as a, as a young teenager, I always read books, but not about normal books. I read things about facts. I was interested in, in information about the world, about interesting facts that people didn't know about. I'm always looking at what everyone else is not doing. So whenever I train in, in different therapies, when one of my friends and people myself are training in, I look for therapies that they're not training in because I wanted to be different in some kind of way. So I'm always looking for information. So everyone has a theme to their life. And most people who look back and go, ah, oh, okay, that was my thing. So it always goes back to your childhood. You was, whatever you want to do with your life, you've been doing your whole life anyway. It's the same for you, you know, with being a connector, you've been connecting with people your whole life. It's been something that's your gift you've been doing as a child, right? But you, you didn't aware of how that would play out. So the thing is, is that then how do you put that into your work well, if you told me when I had my first kind of insights and such that this is how I'd be doing it, I would have got it. So I don't think it, you can, in a sense, craft it. I mean, today, obviously, you've got coaching, and a lot of people try going to go coaching. I personally don't think that coaching is always the best way for a lot of people to use their intuitive gifts, because I, I think sometimes you can actually get more impact on people doing other things, because we forget. We're thinking that we only communicate through verbal one-to-one, -one. but by, by creating content of any kind, especially with the internet, by creating content, you have the same impact because you're still using your voice. So if you're writing a, a blog or you, if, if you're doing a blog, you're creating content that's channeling the same information through because the people who are meant to get the information you're sharing will receive the information. That's why I've done Energy Fusion and done other and a lot of vlogging and, and uh, blogging is because... I can't give everybody all the information one-to-one. -one. We're never going to have that kind of system. So there are other ways of tapping in and using it. You know, I can sometimes just write and write and write. And the information that's coming through is not relevant information for me, but when I put it out on blog, I get people come back and go, oh, I read that at the perfect time. So it's understanding your medium for getting the information you want. So... I think there's going to be like, I think there's too much of an influx of coaching. People think if I'm a coach, I can help people. Go, no, sometimes the best way to help people is just to tap into what really makes you feel good. And there are other ways of giving you information out to get to the right people. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And it's, um, you know, the internet is a beautiful thing because it enables us to help and reach more people, doesn't it? So, you think, you know, this conversation we have now, this is an to reach more people. So there may be one thing that I say or you say that hits someone's conscious mind. They went, oh my God, I've got it now. Now, I've had, had that happen so many times with people. It's only, it could only be one phrase or one sentence, but it's been enough to trigger something within their mind. And they went, ah, okay, that was the thing I've been looking for. That's why that synchronicity thing is so important. Yeah, and I love what you said about um, how we have a theme to our life. And that's one of the things I wanted to demonstrate with, with these interviews is that everyone has a light within them. It's just tuning into that light to enable you to spread it and help others. So that theme is the thing that I wanted to show through the interviews. And then, then when people become more conscious of what the little signs are on their journey, then ideally they can tune in quicker and have a bigger impact on the planet. Yeah, and it's just making people aware that the theme can can express itself in so many different ways. So yes. don't think you have to go down a certain path. You can jump, some people can jump from different career to different career to express the same theme. Because depending on the theme, you know, if you think of someone as communication, well, that has got so many different ways that you can you can channel that theme in your life in terms of the work that you do. Yeah. So for me, is don't get too caught up in the role, the job, the title you want to call it. How do you want to get your information across right now? Remember, how you do, you know, how I was doing it in my 20s and my 30s and now in my 40s is changing. And when I get into my 50s, it may be even different. I don't know. The thing is, it, it will probably change as you go along, as long as you're willing to adapt with it. Because obviously, how we now communicate because of the internet and other things is that means we, we get our information in different ways. So we now have to be aware that how we're communicating with people is changing. So how we, we live our life and live our themes 
change also in accordance with that because technology is now demanding a lot more. So I would say for most people, if you're not doing something online, then that's probably one area you need to focus on first of all, because that's probably where you're really going to help to impact the most people now in the world by going online. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for listening to Kitty Talks. Be sure to head over to our kittytalks.com website become a member of our exclusive club and you'll get free interviews and access to our private Facebook group. Exclusive webinars and secret success interviews. See you there.